Hey Maddie, how's it going? Oh, my little brother is acting like a chicken again. Oh no. Have you tried getting him to stop? Oh heck no, my mom's really enjoying the free eggs. Oh. Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by... Riley Physicians, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Riley Physicians. Learn more at siphysicians.org slash pediatrics. WFYI Indianapolis and these Indiana Public Television Stations. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by... WTIU members. Thank you. Welcome to the Friday Zone, everybody. I'm Luke. And I'm Maddie. We're getting down with some farm living lake. Oh, oh, a veritable cornucopia of goodness, Maddie. You know, that reminds me of a song. Oh, does it? Is it a song about pumpkins? What? No. Oh. Well, that's too bad, because that's what's up next on the Friday Zone playlist. Uh, <laughs> Chelsea, hi Becca. Hi Felix. hi Felix. How are you? Good. Good. <gasps> Becca, what is that on your arm? I got poison ivy, Felix. What is poison ivy? That does not sound good. It's not good. Well, Felix, when you go play outside, sometimes there's these plants. Uh -huh. You rub up against them, they think that they're getting harmed. So they'll give you this oil on your skin, uh -huh. and then you might get a, some blisters, and those don't feel oh, very good. No. And then, and then what happens? You just 
itch your arm a lot? Mm-hmm. You get a blister on your arm <gasps> after you touch the leaves, and when you scratch the blister, uh -huh. it can make it bleed and stuff. Oh, no. Is poison ivy's not everywhere, is it? No, Felix. It looks okay. like this. It has three points on it. Oh, okay. So the okay. trick is you got to stay away from the threes, okay? Oh, oh yeah. No, don't get that near me. I, I'm scared of the, the poison ivy. Yeah. Okay. You don't want to get near things with threes. So okay. when you touch it, it can give you the rash. So stay threes. away from it. Stay away from threes. Mm -hmm. Just like my fingers. Three, three, three. Okay, okay. What happens if you get the poison? Like, Becca, you have poison ivy. Yes. So how do you get rid of it? It's not there forever, is it? No, your doctor will give you a cream that you put on it. Okay. And the cream will just make the rash go away after a while as long as you stop itching it. Oh, so you don't want to itch it. Right. Oh, okay. And then it goes away. Yes. Oh, that's so... Whew! That makes me feel better about going and playing outside now, and I won't get the poison ivy. Yep, just stay away from the threes. Ah, the threes! Stay away from the threes! Friday, Friday. In the Friday zone. Friday. Cecilia's here with another fun idea. The next time you have an egg for breakfast, or bake a cake, crack the egg carefully. If you leave most of the shell behind, you can make a fun little egghead planter. Simply add a little potting soil, sprinkle some grass seed on top, and water a little bit every day. If you keep your egghead in the sunshine and keep his soil moist, you'll soon have some green hair sprouting. And after a few days, it'll get longer and longer. Eventually, you might need to give your egghead a haircut. Make a whole family of eggheads. Thanks, Cecilia. Excellent job. I took my girl out on a date last Friday night. We struck out for Italian, I thought that'd be all right. They sat us at a table next to the fireplace. Next thing that I knew, she smeared spaghetti on her face. Hey now, did you do? You're so childlike. You don't have proper manners, you're not too polite. I don't want to ask her, oh, but don't play with your food. That childish girl of mine, that did you do? I thought I'd try my luck again, so we went to a show. We sat down in the theater with the popcorn and a coat. The movie started playing, but my luck ran dry. Cause throughout the whole darn movie, all she did was cry. Hey now, did you do? You're so childlike. You don't have proper manners, you're not too polite. Please stop your wailing, it is rather rude. That childish girl of mine, that did you do? That childish girl of mine, that did you do? In the Friday zone, Friday. Lots of stuff comes from down on the farm. And here in Indiana, we love our corn. Let's see where some of that goes right now on this Friday's own investigation. Hey everybody, we're here at Not Just Popcorn where they have over 330 different flavors of popcorn. Now come on, let's go inside and find out how it's made and how it gets distributed so you can taste. All right, well, we're here on the first step of the production process for making this popcorn. All right, now, Mary Jane, hit me through it. What, what are we doing here? Well, he's getting ready to add the popcorn and the oil. The uh, popper's already all heated up. And as soon as he does that, it'll push the lid straight up, pop out onto the conveyor belt. There is a difference between a popping corn and regular corn. Right. And, and the moisture inside the corn, when you heat it up, that's what makes it pop. Exactly. This is where you're going to see the um, pops and scraps falling into the tray. And it comes out into this bag. When you're flavoring the popcorn, is it just, what, what kind of popcorn do you use in the bag? Well, for all the savories, they're going to be powders. That's going to be like your dill pickle, biscuits and gravy, hot wings. Biscuits and gravy and hot wing popcorn? Yes. 
in the other flavors, like the, the hard candies, like yes. you said? We're going to go to the other end to watch how we make those. We have this um, big machine right here, and what, what does it do? How does it make the, the candy coating? Well, you put your ingredients in. Oh, I just heard a buzz. At 300 degrees, the timer goes off. You add the flavoring. After you add the flavoring, you're going to add the popcorn. And so you just take these containers of flavor and just pour them over the popcorn in that machine? That's exactly oh, right. That's just amazing. And then she moves the popcorn around on the table to get it nice and cooled and separated into the individual kernels. And that's the way every single flavor is made. All right, so we've been looking at how the popcorn is made, but how does the popcorn get here? The farmers have to plant the seed, then they're going to fertilize. It's when they harvest, and then they'll put it in their drying and storage bins, and that's where they'll keep it until we need it. All right, guys, it has been a blast here at Not Just Popcorn. So if you're going to want some tasty treats like these, you're going to have to come down to Edinburgh, Indiana. Hello everybody, my name is Sam Bartlett and today we have another stunt from the world of Stuntology. That's right, all you need for this one is a simple towel, about like this. This stunt is how to make a chicken out of a towel. I know you've always wanted to know how to do that, right? Simple. Um, looks about like this. Uh, we're going to take a towel and we're going to roll it up about halfway right there. Now we're going to roll up the other side like that. And then we're going to fold the chicken to be in half so it looks about like that. We're going to reach down and pull the chicken's legs out. There's one. There's another. There's the third leg. And there's the fourth. We're going to hold on to those legs, give it a big yoga stretch with our hands like this. Whoop! And there we have a chicken from a towel. Mwah! It is what the garden needs Planting the seeds Dirt on our knees and elbows Everybody knows That's how it grows Digging the weeds Sweeping away the fallen leaves Loving the breeze that we can always help our garden grow Taking it slow That's how we grow And now, a story from a winner of the PBS Kids Writer's Contest. It was a warm spring day, and Tim was sitting on a shelf with nothing to do. Suddenly, a big shadow was coming towards Tim. But to Tim's relief, it was a little girl picking him up. He got put into a bag. Ooh, exclaimed Tim. It smells like cat food in here. It was a super bumpy ride. Finally, the ride was over. At the humongous house, the little girl put him into the trash can. I thought cans like me should be put in recycling bins so they can be reused, shouted Tim. Tim jumped as high as he could to get out, but the trash can was too high. Suddenly, he felt himself move. No, wait, it was a trash can moving. He was getting dumped into the garbage truck. Doomed. He fell on top of a slimy and sticky banana. Then a pig pile of yogurt fe fell on top of him. Oh no, cried Tim. Luckily, a dove picked her up. This should be good luck. Doves mean peace, right? 
Tim thought as he wandered off to dreamland. Tim was high above the city with the dove now. Suddenly, the dove let go of Tim, and Tim fell into the girl's backyard. At the little girl's house, Tim quietly jumped on the table as the girl went to sleep. Tim then hopped towards the trash can, wanting to get all the other things that should be recycled, like paper, cans, and plastic out of the trash. Charge, yelled Tim. The trash can tipped over and fell right on Tim. The next morning, the girl t- came down for breakfast and found poor Tim under the trash can. I wish I had a recycling bin, the girl said so- sadly. Ding dong! Tim jumped up. Standing outside was a cantankerous, lethargic, and malevolent looking guy. The girl was flabbergasted. We care for cycling bins, the man mumbled. Yay, squeaked the girl. Hurry up and get your bin, snapped the man. Well, the little girl learned her lesson of recycling, so will you recycle too? Want to see your story on the Friday Zone? It's easy. Just enter the PBS Kids Writers Contest. Ask your teacher how to enter or visit pbskids.org. And now for some fun with our friends from Comedy Sports. Woo! Thanks. Hi, I'm Erin. I'm with Comedy Sports, and uh, this is my friend Tom. He happens to be an expert on gardening, and he's going to answer some questions that you guys have about gardening today. Uh, so let's start off. Um, what's something you would like to know about gardening? Yes? How fast can things grow? How fast can things grow? <laughs> ah, speedy growth. What all gardeners want. Of course, it takes the right soils, the right seeds. For instance, we use all organic products at Tom's Garden Shop. That's very important to us. And of course, water, water, water. Ah, ah. The earth given and water certainly makes those plants grow fast. Perfect. Um, to follow up on that, uh, so you say soil helps uh, the plants grow. Um, how would you arrange the soil in a pot? I have some pots here. If you could just show us, that would be great. Oh, very good. I'll just take this top one here, and oh, it looks pretty clean in there. Let's get let's get some good Indiana dirt. Look at that stuff there. That okay, is perfect. That's the base. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a, a couple of seeds, just a few to that fine Indiana dirt. Perfect. Of course, sometimes I, I miss, and I'll add maybe sprinkle one or two more. And then what we want to do is get some fine sandy loam, typically found in Jasper County, Indiana. And here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, it smells so good. And then we water it. Perfect. And how would you do that? Well, there we go. Very carefully, of course. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Naturally, what we'd like to have is a pot with a cap in the bottom of it. Because when we're first starting to grow these seeds into a flower or a plant of some kind, we want the soil to retain moisture. Then, once the seedling begins to sprout, we want the pot to drain. And then you'll have your finished product, which of course is a beautiful daisy. Wow. Oh, sometimes I stab myself in the chin. <laughs> I get so excited about flowers. Those daisies did grow fast. All right, does anybody have another question about planting or gardening? How many years does it take a forest to grow? How many years does it take a forest to grow? Well, that depends. For instance, if you're in the 100 year woods, it takes 100 years. And if you're not, it could take any <laughs> amount of time, something longer than an hour, and probably less than a millennium. Interesting. That's, 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 that's very good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this out of the way real quick. Oh, thank you. Um, because thank it's you. so beautifully it's arranged. You could take that home, oh, as a matter of fact. thank you. You're so I kind. appreciate oh, that. I, sometimes <laughs> I get so excited, I, I do two things at once. I'm a multitasker, you know. Oh, so and I just love, 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 love playing with my fertilizer. Of course you do. <laughs> I think uh, I have uh, time for one more question from our audience. Does anybody else have a question? When would first seeds discover? Oh, 
when were the first seeds discovered? Oh, where to begin? Seeds go way, way back to like caveman days. They were there before the caveman. And then the caveman found them and decided, hey, I'm tired of moving all over the place. I think what I'll do is gather seeds and grow my garden here just outside the village. Tom, we've learned so much today. You're welcome. Welcome. Today in the Earth Eats Kitchen, we are going to make very good dip. Very Not good dip. Yeah. Ah, that sounds very good. It Heather. is very good. Yeah. You'll really like it. And it's really simple. And I'm uh, using a tiny little kitchen appliance called a mini food processor. Oh, okay. Yeah, we used the big one one we time. We did. Yeah. We did. This is for smaller, okay. smaller things, smaller yeah. items. Um, I use this a lot for making small batches of like salsa or little things. It's easy, really easy, okay. and you'll like it. It's not quite as loud. Oh, good, good, very good. Very good. <laughs> okay. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to throw some strawberries in here. Oh, yeah, I, I love strawberries. They're really, really good, and we're not going to puree them. We're just going to chop them up okay. into little okay. bites. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I like little bites. Me yeah. too. What, what, what are they going to do to them? Well, it's going to be kind of like a strawberry hurricane in oh. there. Oh, hurricane. Ooh. Ooh. Ah. Oh. That's it. Oh. Okay. And then I'm going to put in just a little bit of sugar. Okay. Not very much. We yeah. don't need that much. Not too much. No. You get too crazy. <laughs> ah. And then to this, I'm going to add a little bit of sour cream. Okay. You could even use Greek yogurt. And then to this, I'm going to add some soft cream cheese. Oh, okay, okay. Really oh, easy. Yeah, that looks really easy. And that's all there is to it. <gasps> I'm going to put the lid back on okay. and spin it around yeah. again. Yeah. That was fast, Heather. It is fast. Yeah. Oh, okay. eh, I'm not scared. <laughs> nah, not anymore. Look at that. It's pink. And sometimes if your cream cheese sticks a little bit, yeah. you might have to take off the lid and knock it back oh, down. Oh, okay, okay. It's a little resistant. Good thinking. Go. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Right where you can see it. I'm going to watch. That's Look it. Look at that. Yeah. Wow. So I'm going to put some right here in this bowl just for you. <gasps> For me? Just for you. Oh, Heather, you are so sweet. Like sugar. <laughs> oh, thank you. You're welcome. So this is really good with some different things dipped in it, like okay. pretzels or oh. little shortbread cookies. Yeah. But it's also really good put on a bagel or a piece of toast in the okay. morning. Okay, that does sound good. Like yeah. for breakfast. For breakfast. Yeah. <gasps> oh. It's very pretty, I think. Yeah. And it's healthy. Yeah. Look at that. And that's it. That's all there is to it. Super easy. <laughs> hey, everyone. Here's that recipe again. You can write it down or, or go to our website and watch Earth Eat right on your computer. Yeah, eating smart is more than easy. It's super simple. It's me, Bob. I once tried to drive a tractor, but my paws couldn't reach what? the pedals. potatoes hate the most? What day do potatoes hate the most? Well, I don't know. What day? Friday. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> did, did it Friday? <laughs> Friday. 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 Hey, 
Luke. Oh, hey, man. What are you doing? Oh, I'm actually working on a pretty cool science experiment. It looks pretty cool. What is it? You want to know about it? Yeah, I do. All How does right. it work? How does it work? Okay, so you take white flowers. Okay. What kind of flowers? Kind Any kind of flower will work. What, what I'm using these? right now is carnations. Carnations. Is what they're, called. Look, carnations. they're pretty. They smell nice. Smell them. Ooh. Yeah, isn't that nice? Mm. But what you do is you take the flowers and you stick them in water with food coating, and that's it. That's it. Well, how does that work? Because <laughs> they're changing colors. I mean, I don't think they're all the way there yet, but this right. one's red and green right. and yellow. Right, exactly. So how it works so... is imagine that you're drinking like a milkshake through a straw or something like okay. that. Right? And that's yeah. kind of what the flowers are doing. They're pulling up the water through their stems uh -huh. and into the petals. It's a really cool process known as transpiration. That's a big science word okay, for yeah. you. Okay, yeah, you may want to explain that because I don't know transpiration. what transpiration means. Uh, it is basically what I said. It just draws it up into the flower. So through, through the stem, mm -hmm. there's like a straw type of there thing? There is. You know the word for that? Yeah. It's called a xylem. A xylem. 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 So it's a straw type thing through the stem? <laughs> it is, yes. And then it goes up into the flower. And so you know that flowers need water to survive, right? That's why we water well, they're flowers very thirsty. every day. So that's they're how it works. Thirsty. It's trying to get its water that it needs and it's pulling it up in there. Okay, so, but wait, 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 I have a question. What's that? So you are aware that there are flowers that are actually colored already, right? I, this is great, I'm just, you know. Well, you know, Maddie, this is know. just more fun. You know, we get to see the fun. process ourselves. I think it's very fun. And learn something. You know what, Luke, I would really like to do this. You do? Yes. All right, I, but so. But I want to do my own. Let's do it. The okay. first thing we need is a cup. Okay, I got one. Where'd you get that? That Perfect. was magical. Magic. The second okay. thing we need is uh, food colorings. Ooh, which mm -hmm. color shall I what use? What color do you want? I think I'm gonna use blue. Blue? We don't have a blue one. That's true. Make make a blue. Make us okay. a pretty blue. And then water. Well, that's a nice jug of water you got there. Thank you, thank you. It came from my magic stash. Okay. And then finally, a thank flower you. fruit. <laughs> thank you. This is great. Okay. All right. So we just pour the water in the cup. This mm -hmm. is an easy thing to make. It's very you, easy. All you have to really get is flowers. I mean, I'm Everything sure mom and dad have food coloring. Have food right? coloring. Definitely have water and cups. Yeah, I think water is a must in a cup. So just water, cup, flower, food coloring, and you've got a beautiful flower of your own color. And that's it. I think we should go ahead and make this, but before we do, remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll see you here next we week. Okay, I'm ready Let's to Let's get do this. started, Maddie. So right. do the food coloring first. How about that? Food coloring first? Yeah, that way I it'll mix the, it. All right, fine. We I can want do to do the, the water, water first. first. Okay, can I do it since yes, it's my yes, project? Yes, yes, yes. You can do it. That's fine. You. All right. All right, how much water? Does it matter? <laughs> Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by Riley Physicians, part of IU Health Southern Indiana Physicians. For decades, parents in our community have trusted their children's care to Riley Physicians. Learn more at siphysicians.org slash pediatrics. WFYI Indianapolis and these Indiana public television stations. The Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members, thank you.